guys, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to MBBS Treasure Channel. In this video, we are going to read about the pathological action of diminished and high barometric pressure. Yes, in this video, we are going to discuss how the change in the barometric pressure, whether it is high or it is low, it will consider to lead to a pathological condition in the human beings. We are going to discuss the mechanism of action of this topic. In my previous video, I have already explained the external environment like the ionizing radiations or any kind of mechanical trauma that will lead to a shock and how those external environment causes the pathological condition. We have already discussed its mechanism. Now in this video, we are going to describe that external factor, one of the most important factor of this external environment that is the barometric pressure, how it's going to cause that pathological condition. Okay, so let's start our today's topic. Okay, so in this topic, we are going to describe how the change in barometric pressure will lead to a pathological condition. First of all, what do you mean by this barometric pressure? Barometric pressure is otherwise said to be atmospheric pressure. What do you mean by this atmospheric pressure? The pressure exerted by the atmosphere to the environment of the earth. This is known as atmospheric pressure and in standard unit, these are said like 101 kilopascal or 760 millimeter of mercury this we have already read in physics okay these are the important uh, standard units we should remember for normal things okay so there are two conditions that arises in the barometric pressure whether it can be decreasing in the barometric pressure or increasing in the barometric pressure when this conditions arises or when we sense this barometric pressure changes when we climb the mountains or flying in aeroplane we will sense the decreasing in the atmospheric pressure and when we will dive inside the depth of the ocean or sea then we will sense the increasing in the barometric pressure or increasing in the atmospheric pressure so these two changes will lead to the pathological condition listen here you can remember one thing that this change in barometric pressure whether it will decrease or it will increase it only depends on height or altitude how it depends it depends inversely proportional to the atmospheric pressure or barometric pressure this atmospheric pressure is inversely proportional to altitude or height if we will move up towards the mountains then we will sense the decreasing in the pressure and when we will move towards the depth of the earth or ocean or sea then we will feel the increasing in the atmospheric pressure According to these changes in the environmental conditions of this barometric pressure, we are going to have different mechanisms of action of this pressure and it will lead to the pathology, different kinds of pathology. Now we are going to read that if the decreasing in this barometric pressure will occur in the environment, then what will be the pathogenic effect in the environment? First, there will be decreasing in the atmospheric pressure, obviously. Then secondly, there will be decreasing in the partial pressure of oxygen in the atmosphere as we will move upward from the normal level of, if this is normal level of atmosphere, if we will move upward towards the mountain directions, then the atmospheric pressure will down, will decrease with that the pressure or the partial pressure of oxygen in the atmosphere will decrease and that will lead to this pathology and thirdly as we will move upward then we will feel other kinds of rays like cosmic or ultraviolet rays that will also have certain kind of harmful effects on our body 
but most precisely or most importantly we have to deal with these two uh, parameters that is decreasing in the atmospheric pressure and decreasing in the partial pressure of oxygen how the changes will occur the bodily changes that will lead to pathology okay let's read the mechanism first of all there will be decreasing in the atmospheric pressure will lead to cause in the expansion of gases okay this atmospheric pressure will lead to expansion of gases first thing and secondly what will happen the solubility or the dissolving capacity of the gases in the liquid medium in or the body fluids that are present in the blood or in body the solubility will decrease okay we are going to consider these two terms one is expansion of gases and second one is this solubility or dissolving capacity of the gases in the liquid medium and thirdly what will happen the boiling point of those body fluids which are present inside will decrease this all these three things occurs according due to the decreasing in the barometric or atmospheric pressure and why i just mentioned these three things only because these three things will lead to certain symptoms of the disease known as mountain disease or the high altitude disease what will happen if the atmospheric pressure will decrease the expansion of gases the gases will tend to expand from the normal position and the gases that are present inside the cavity will give this relative pressure that is the reason why the relative pressure inside the body will increase and the equilibrium will change that is the reason why we will we will feel certain kind of illness then the solubility or dissolving capacity will decrease and the boiling point will also decrease from these three things you will just remember you will just remember one thing that this barometric pressure or atmospheric pressure is inversely proportional to this expansion of gases and the solubility of gases but this is directly proportional to boiling point of liquids in our body now these three things will lead to bodily changes and that we are going to call the symptoms of decreasing barometric pressure what are these symptoms it will lead certain kind of symptoms like barotitis barosinusitis rupture of small vessels okay what do you mean by barotitis barotitis means baro means pressure due to change in pressure in our ear there will be inflammation of our ear otitis means inflammation of ear so in conclusion we will find these symptoms during decreasing the barometric pressure same manner there will be baro sinusitis in frontal sinus uh, inflammation of frontal sinus then rupture of small vessels mostly there will be nasal bleeding why the small vessels uh, rupture will takes place because the small vessels have less resistance towards the expansion of gases as the vessels carries those uh, soluble uh, soluble gases uh, like oxygen carbon dioxide nitrogen they will try to escape from the small vessels that leads to rupture of small vessels and that will cause this hemorrhage okay next what happens there will be gas symbolism as the solubility decreases there will be transition of gases dissolved the equilibrium will not be maintained so far that is the reason why the nitrogen or other kinds of gases that are already that was already dissolved in the blood will try to escape due to which there will be formation there will be formation of certain air bubbles inside the vessels and this air bubbles will block the pathways of the vessels and it will cause this gas embolism finally it will lead to certain changes due to this transition of uh, gases dissolved in blood then what will happen there will be formation of this 
tissue emphysema. What do I mean by tissue emphysema? In our third point of mechanism, we have already read that the boiling point will decrease. As the boiling point will decrease, the bodily fluid will produce or will release the water vapors from the tissue. And as the water vapors escapes from the tissue, they will be present. The uh, they will be present under the skin of the tissues, and they will be trapped. They will be trapped air or the bubbles of water vapors under the tissue, and the tissue gets this emphysema. So we will call it as tissue emphysema due to decreasing in the boiling point of vessel, uh, blood, or any kind of body fluids. Okay. Then what happens uh, as we learn this barometric pressure? In a similar manner, we already discussed that there will there will be change in the partial pressure of oxygen. It will decrease. What will what will happen when the partial pressure of oxygen will decrease? In the environment, the oxygen will will be deficient. It means there will be less amount of oxygen in inspired air. As we are inspiring, and there will be less amount of oxygen in the alveolar air, the air present in the alveoli. That will lead to decreasing in the hemoglobin oxygen saturation. What do you mean by hemoglobin oxygen saturation? Listen, when the oxygen comes in the blood towards the blood, then for carrying those oxygen. Uh, Hemoglobin is a protein that is present inside the blood that helps in transport of oxygen from the alveoli, alveoli towards the total whole organ of our body. That is the reason why the hemoglobin oxygen saturation is required. But in this case, what will happen as the partial pressure of oxygen is less, there will be deficient of oxygen availability in our environment, and hence we. There will be decreasing in the hemoglobin oxygen saturation. One hemoglobin protein requires four molecules of oxygen for binding or complete saturation. But that can never happen. Uh, that will not happen due to decreasing in the partial pressure of oxygen. Okay. This is the reason why there will be developing of uh, a disease that is known as altitude sickness or high mountain sickness disease. This is the important questions of this topic that you have to uh, explain the mechanisms why or how this aviator mountain sickness disease will cause this finally hypoxia and hypoxemia condition. This is the important question. How it occurs? As we are moving in upward direction, listen. Climbing mountains, the pressure will decrease when we will move upward in a slanting upward directions towards the top of the mountains. Then, what we will feel? There will be decreasing in the partial pressure of oxygen. There will be decreasing in the hemoglobin oxygen saturation. That will result. That will quickly result in the activation of hypoxia center in central nervous system. As the uh, body senses the environment that the environment is deficient of oxygen, then the body will try to compensate that deficiency by increasing the number of hemoglobin. For certain uh, quick instance, the body will try to increase the minute ventilation rate. That is the reason why to uh, avoid this hypoxia condition, there will be activation of those hypoxia center in the central nervous system. Due to after that, the Euphoria condition will take place. Euphoria means there will be highly activation of uh, sensory and motor functions of the central nervous system. And finally, when the body cannot afford enough amount of oxygen from the surroundings, finally the body will fall in hypoxia and hypoxemia condition. Hypoxia means the less amount of oxygen present. In the surroundings or in our environment, and hypoxemia means, as the terms uh, is ending with zemia, it means less amount of oxygen present in the blood. We can divide the word hypo means less, oxia means oxygen, hypo means less, oxia means oxygen, and zemia means 
blood okay so these two condition will arise in this mountain sickness disease this is the important questions that you have to explain the mechanism of actions how the hypoxia and hypoxemia condition will arise in mountain sickness disease and what are the features or what are the symptoms it appears to it okay next one more thing comes uh, is that in this topic this mountain sickness disease there comes a questions that what kind of hypoxia occurs or what kind of hypoxia is the reason of causing this mountain sickness disease yes from this very simple thing decreasing in the partial pressure of oxygen in the surrounding we will say it is hypoxic hypoxia okay in uh, in respiratory pathology we are going to read different kinds of hypoxia but uh, for a very short question i am just saying that uh, the main reason of mountain sickness is hypoxic hypoxia uh, there are four kinds of hypoxia that we are going to read in future and the same in a short the uh, short time like there are four kinds first one is hypoxic hypoxia then second one is respiratory hypoxia and the third one is hemic hypoxia and finally the fourth one is tissue hypoxia listen when we will add the word hypoxia after these words then obviously hypoxia means deficient of oxygen but due to varying the situation they will be called as different kinds of hypoxia like if there will be deficiency of oxygen in our environment surrounding environment then we will call it as hypoxic hypoxia so this all things that we read during climbing mountains due to decreasing the barometric pressure or atmospheric pressure then only the partial pressure of oxygen in the surrounding decreases this is the reason why we call it as hypoxic hypoxia situation in the mountain sickness disease but when uh, how this rest three will occurs if respiratory uh, respiratory hypoxia occurs when there will be any kind of problem with our respiratory tracts during any kind of inhalations if there will be any kind of obstructions in our respiratory tracts like copd then we will feel this respiratory hypoxia condition and in hemic hypoxia condition as the oxygen will travel through our respiratory tracts then it will try to diffuse from the alveoli in the uh, in the blood vessels it will try to come but as there will be any kind of disorder in the blood or inside the blood or any kind of problem with this hemoglobin protein then we will then there will be arising of the deficiency of oxygen in the vessels that will call as hemic hypoxia and finally if all three things will be okay and the oxy uh, the oxygen is not reaching in enough amount to the tissue then we will call it as tissue hypoxia it means the diffusion from the blood towards the tissue is not happening or is there, there will be any kind of problem with this transportation of the uh, oxygen from the blood towards the tissue then we will call it as tissue hypoxia so these are the four kinds of hypoxia that we will read in our future uh, respiratory pathology and uh, uh, this this topic is important as because we learned here the mountain sickness and why it occurs due to hypoxic hypoxia okay okay one more thing i want to explain here is that this sudden decompression when a person is traveling in a spacecraft or after traveling some time he faces certain kinds of these symptoms like all these things then the regulators or the managers of that spacecraft tries to decompress the atmospheric pressure inside the spacecraft due to sudden decompression what will happen there will be death of that person why there will be instant hypoxia and boiling point of blood will highly increase the instant hypoxia and boiling point of blood will lead to death of the patient 
and this is the reason why I choose these three factors as the most important factor of the decreasing in the atmospheric pressure causing this pathogenic effect. Okay, so in my next video, I am going to explain how this increasing pressure or this diving to depth of the ocean will cause this cation's work or will cause this pathological actions. And uh, just to remind you that there is a cation's disease that we are going to read in my next video. Okay, uh, so this was all for today's topic. Uh, I hope you like my video and uh, you fully understand this topic. Uh, if you have any kind of doubt, please write me in the comment section below. I will try to make those videos. And if you think this is helpful, then please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching my video.